and thanks for tuning in to the Oxygen Alliance YouTube channel where we share the concentrated talk virtual meeting hosted every Thursday from 2 to 3 p.m. Central African time. In the talk, we discuss different aspects of oxygen concentrate assessment, use, and maintenance. And please don't forget to subscribe and hit that notifications bell. Hello, everyone, and Here. welcome back to our concentrated talk hall brought to you by the Oxygen Alliance. My name is Naomi Thompson, and I'm currently in Lilongwe, Malawi, and I'll be hosting the call today. I'll be joined by my colleague, Maui Lungu, along with our usual technicians from OpenO2 and Sunray. On the technicians panel today, we have Paulina, Masofa Mujaji, Kowinda Singh, Kelvin Saidi, Fatani Tamandigani, Aubrey Chimkunda, and Brenda. In case you're just joining us for the first time, the Concentrator Talk Call is a virtual meeting hosted by the Oxygen Alliance, and it's brought to you every Thursday from 2 to 3 p.m. Central African time. And here we discuss different aspects of oxygen concentrator assessment, use and maintenance. So if you have any problems regarding your oxygen concentrator, you can send your questions through to our email info at oxygenalliance.org. And our technicians will do their very best to assist you with the right solutions. If you have any questions during the call, you can simply raise your hand and you come off mute and you ask your question, or you can simply paste it in the chat and I'll read it out. So normally we have a topic of interest and today Fatani will be talking about assessment of oxygen concentrators in the hospital wards. So without further ado, we jump into our questions. Our first question reads, hello, I'm a nurse at a certain hospital located in a very dusty area. Our biomedical technicians keep complaining about our concentrators registering low purity. I visited a sister hospital in another district and noticed that as opposed to us, they rarely get problems with the concentrators. They mentioned something to do with PPM as one of the ways in which the technicians deal with their problems. I would therefore like to get more insight on this PPM and how it can improve performance of our units. So I'll ask one of our technicians to tackle this question. I'll take this one, Naomi. Thank you for the question. Oxygen concentrators work with ambient air that contains a mixture of gases to produce oxygen at a required percentage of about 95.6%. Air in the atmosphere contains other particles like dust. That's beside um, its chemical comp compositions. The concentrator works through a PSA process in the sieve beds to purify the air that has been taken in from the environment. When the air is being drawn in by the compressor, dust and other particles in the air get drawn in together with the air. These particles are, however, not required in the system and they need to be removed and filtered out. From your explanation, you have mentioned one key element that is a leading cause to the problems you are facing. Oxygen concentrators should be able to work well in all areas, regardless of their environmental conditions. You, however, need to know the area you are working in and how best you can improve the performance of your machine in that specific area. Operating in highly dusty area calls for more of the PPM talked about, that your colleagues has talked about, which is the plant preventative maintenance. Now the PPM is a scheduled maintenance program that takes place regularly and aims at prolonging the lifespan of the machine by preventing it from failing due to human induced factors. From the introduction given, you will note that having dust accumulates in your, accumulate in your machine will do more harm than good. Normally dust accumulates on the gross particle filter and the intake filters, but with your area being very dusty, chances are high that the dust will accumulate not only in the filters, but also in the tubings if left to run for a long time without getting rid of the dust. I will now ask my fellow technician Fatsani to tell us some of the tips we can follow for the PPM process. Uh, thank you, Paulina, for that wonderful insight. So uh, some of the things that you can do during a PPM are 
first uh, you have to make sure that you clean your bacteria and intake filters if they are washable and air, air dry them before pressing them, pressing them back in the machine. For the non washable filters, uh, be sure to replace them once they have become visibly dirty. For other models like the uh, air cycle centrators, you also need to clean the muffler as well. Our secondary can uh, blow off all the dust that is visible in the unit. Dust from the exterior can be cleaned using a damp cloth and a blower can also be used to blow the dust that accumulates in the interior of the machine. Yes. You also need to check the various joints that are in the machine if they are well tightened. So if you find any loose connections in the tubings, uh, trace them and see if they do not allow any dust in the machine and tighten them once you are sure of this. While you are at it, uh, you can also check for loose connections in the electrical wires, just in case some might have come uh, lose while conducting your PPM. So uh, that's all I wanted to add on this. Uh, back to you, Paulina. Um, thank you very much for the tips, Fatsani. And I believe we can, if we follow um, those tips, then our oxygen concentrators can be free from dust. And another thing, if your machine has a humidifier bottle, clean it up and refill with distilled water. Thank you. Question one is done, and I hope we have uh, understood the procedures that need to be taken as we are going through um, our PPM. Do we have any questions or comments or additions to the response that has been given? Okay, seems like we have none. So we move on to our next question. Um, our next question reads, hello, I'm a biomedical engineer working at one of the main referral hospitals in Malawi. I refilled zeolite in the safe bed of a J5 oxygen concentrator, replaced them in the oxygen concentrator and tested them for purity. Unfortunately, the purity dropped to 76%. After further troubleshooting, I discovered that the safe beds were leaking. I don't know how to go about with this problem. Can you help me so that I can seal the leakages? So I'll ask one of our technicians to respond to that question. I'll take this one as well. Thank you, Naomi. Um, the sieve bed is one of the most important part in an oxygen concentrator. And the concentrator cannot operate without the sieve beds. These contain zeolite, a compound that separates nitrogen from the ambient air that enters the oxygen concentrator, leaving the remaining air rich in oxygen. When you refill the sieve beds, be careful when assembling the parts because if not properly sealed, the beds can leak. Make sure you take note of the level of the zeolite before removing it from the bed so that you can use the same mark line when refilling with the new zeolite. You can do this by using a ruler, measuring the distance between the level of the zeolite and the top end of the bed. Too much zeolite will make it difficult for you to seal the bed. Sieve beds for the J5 oxygen concentrators have screws which provide a tight seal. If the threads of the screws are damaged, they may not be able to provide a tight seal. So just make sure that if you are screwing the screws, they are able to rotate up to a certain point and not rotate continuously. If they're rotating continuously, it means the threads are damaged and the screws are now unusable. If the screws are damaged, please replace them with new ones. If you have managed to screw pro properly but the bed is still leaking, I will suggest that you open the sieve bed and wrap the tape at the top of the top cover seat. Wrap enough thread tape and screw in and screw in the top cover and the sieve beds will not leak. Thank you. We have taken note on how we can take care of leakages, especially in the G5 concentrator. Do we have any follow-up questions or comments? Okay, so we move on to our next question and it reads, hi, I'm a biomedical technician at Doha District Hospital. I was assessing concentrators in the wards and I came about a counter V8. The concentrator could run for a few seconds, then raise an alarm and switch off the compressor. When it turned on the flow ball, the flow meter ball kept rising and falling. 
what can be the problem and how can I fix this? So I'll ask one of our technicians to respond to this question. We have a hand from Kelvin Saidi, so go ahead. Uh, thank you, Naomi. So <clears throat> oxygen concentrators raise an alarm, which in some models, uh, this alarm can be accompanied with uh, an LED to show a certain fault. In some concentrators, uh, some faults are accompanied with the compressor shutting down. So there are a number of faults that can make the compressor shut down in a counter concentrator, some of which are disconnection of a pipe from the sieve beds and a loose pipe from the product tank to the pressure sensor on the board. So when the board senses that no air is flowing to the board, it triggers an alarm, which is accompanied with the compressor shutting down. In order to solve your problem, uh, firstly, I advise you to check the air passages. You need to make sure that you have no leakages in your connections. So you can use soapy water to find the leakages and eliminate them if there is any. You also need to make sure that all pipes are connected in the right place, uh, either be the sieve beds or the pressure sensor. Leakages, uh, the reason the flow meter ball keeps fluctuating. So one other thing to note after eliminating the leaks, make sure that you're getting the recommended pressure from the compressor. If the pressure is inadequate, you might need to check the compressor service kit if they need to be changed. So after doing all this, uh, the concentrator needs to run without switching the compressor off. But if the pro problem persists, then you need to check the PCB. Thank you. Over to you now. Thank you, Kelvin, for that response. And uh, as he has rightly put it, leakages are most of the time the reason why uh, the physical board would be fluctuating. So we should make sure that our system does not have leakages. And that can be done by testing it using soapy water. So do we have any follow-up questions or comments and additions to the response that Kelvin has given? Okay, so looks like we have none and we move on to our next question. Hi, I'm a biomedical technician working at a certain organization and I'm working on a 525 developers. The rotary valve is functioning properly and so is every other part. The concentrator has a squeaking sound coming from the compressor and the purity is low. I have serviced the compressor and refilled the sieve beds, and I have also checked for leakages with soapy water, and I have secured them all, and the purity is not rising above 83%. What else can I check to get higher purity? So I'll ask one of our technicians to respond to this question. Okay, we have a hand from Brenda and Aubrey. So we'll start with Brenda, and then if you have any additions or comments, you add up. Refilling zero right in sieve beds or replacing it with new ones and servicing the compressor does not guarantee you to get a higher purity in the end if you have a hidden fault in the concentrator. So if the board, the electronic components and the rotary valve are functioning properly, you, then you have to check the air pathway. You can check if you have any blockages in your pipes and also check if the one-way valves are functioning well. Remove the one-way valves that are after the seat beds and blow them on both sides to be sure that they are in good shape. If any one of the one-way valves is for in a way that it allows oxygen to pass to both sides, it will allow oxygen to move to the other bed when it wastes instead of directing the oxygen to the product tank. Also take note that the one-way valves are installed to prevent the backflow of oxygen then direct the oxygen to the product tank instead of flowing to either of the beds when the sieve bed pressures are lower than in the tank. And if the oxygen flows to the beds when, the, when their pressure is lower than the tank pressure, the period will eventually be affected. So instead you, you have to remove the folded valves and install new ones to make sure that the, and also make sure that the new check valves are able to extend the pressure from the sieve bed. And if you try all of this, you have to be sure to get a high period than before. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brenda, for that response. We have a poll at the end of this question. Um, so I'll ask Maui to launch the poll and he'll give instructions on how we can find it. Okay, hey, thank you very much, Nomi. Uh, so I will be launching our poll. Have you ever met a scenario where you had to change a one-way or check valve that allowed air to flow through in both directions so the one-way valve had a damaged diaphragm uh, so 
I'm going to give it a few seconds for people to vote. And for those of you who uh, don't know how to access the polls, if you are joining us from your mobile phone, then just go to the bottom right of your screen. Uh, you click on the main news option and then a window opens up. And uh, that window, uh, one of the listed options is the activities button. So if you click on the activities button, that takes you to the pause menu. If you're joining us from your computer, then you click uh, on the icon on the far right, bottom right of your screen. Uh, so that's the activities button. So if you just click on that, it will open up a window where you are going to be able to access the pause. So it seems uh, most of us have ever come across this scenario and uh, just a few people who haven't. So at least now we know uh, how to get through this problem once we face it. So thank you very much for that question. Uh, so I am going to end the poll and back to you, Naomi. Thank you very much for that. And uh, thank you for the response, Brenda. Um, a reminder to those that are just joining us for the first time, be sure to share with us your contact details that we add you to our emailing list that you can be able to get notifications of the recently posted activities. So right now we'll take a slight diversion and jump into our topic of interest where Fatsani will be talking about assessment of oxygen concentrators in hospital wards. So Fatsani, you have the floor. Thank you, Now, So it's time for today's topic of interest and in today's topic of interest i'll be looking more into how we can assess oxygen concentrators in the wards so the title is assessment of oxygen concentrators in the wards so just a quick recap an oxygen concentrator is a medical device that delivers continuous flow of air to a patient who has respiratory problems so it works by drawing in ambient air using the compressor and filtering the air of nitrogen in canisters called sieve beds. So inside this sieve bed, there is a molecular sieve called zeolite that does this filtering process using a principle known as pressure swing adsorption, or PSA. So in this PSA process, nitrogen is adsorbed by the zeolite at high pressure and then released when the pressure drops. After this process, oxygen remains as the uh, dominant constituent of the air and is directed to the product tank and then to the outlet through some other components. Assessment of oxygen concentrators involves checking if the concentrator is giving the recommended purity at maximum flow. The flow is determined by the flow meter that is placed on the plant or the oxygen concentrator and the recommended oxygen purity or concentration by the World Health Organization is 85% to 95.6% of oxygen. For most concentrators, for example, the DevOps is 525KS, maximum flow is 5 liters per minute, while some have a maximum flow of 8 liters per minute, for example, the Canter V8 concentrator, and some have a maximum flow of 10 liters per minute, for example, the Airsa Penulife Elite 10 liters. So this maximum flow of an oxygen concentrator is known as the capacity of that concentrator. For example, we say the Devil Beast 525KS has a capacity of 5 liters, and a working concentrator has to give 95.6% at maximum flow or its rated capacity. In place of an oxygen concentrator's model or its capacity, the assessment of every concentrator follows the same steps and uses the same tools. So the primary tools that you need to assess an oxygen concentrator are when you need an oxygen analyzer, a pressure gauge, sometimes a humidity sensor and also a multimeter. Now we we'll look at assessment of oxygen purity in the wards. The most important tool you need uh, to assess purity is an oxygen analyzer. An oxygen analyzer is a handheld device that is used to measure the purity of oxygen from an oxygen concentrator. The ultrasonic uh, sensor inside the oxygen analyzer is also able to measure the flow of your oxygen in liters per minute. If you want to learn more about oxygen testing technologies that are available, you can check out the topic of interest that was done in the concentrator talk of 27 October 2022 on the Oxygen Alliance YouTube channel. So the link to that concentrator talk will be posted in the chat graphics. Some oxygen analyzers also have a pressure sensor that is used to check oxygen delivery pressure. Now, what are the steps that you have to follow in order to assess purity of an oxygen concentrator? So for a successive purity assessment of an oxygen concentrator, you first turn on the concentrator and let it run for at least five minutes. 
before connecting the analyzer to the output. The reason for letting the concentrator run for that time before testing for purity is because the product tank might have some stored oxygen from last use. And if we just switch on and test immediately, we'll be measuring the purity at that past state and not the present state. Or in other words, uh, we want the oxygen purity to stabilize in the product tank before testing. Uh, we also want the pressure to stabilize. And due to power quality issues, startup voltages may surge or suck. And more about voltage surges and voltage sucks and other power quality issues can be found in the topic of interest that was done uh, in concentrator talk of 13th of October 2022. So you can uh, check out this concentrator, uh, this concentrator talk on the Oxygen Alliance YouTube channel, of which uh, the link to that concentrator talk will be pasted in the chat. So these power quality issues, they affect the uh, compressor and the concentrator in terms of either a rise or a drop in output, uh, output pressure. So five minutes is enough for the voltages to stabilize and 10, and in 10, uh, compressor output pressure is also stabilized. Why we want the compressor output pressure to stabilize is because this pressure affects the PSA process in the sieve beds. At very low or very high pressure, uh, the nitrogen adsorption efficiency inside the sieve beds is reduced, which in turn uh, results in a drop in purity. After reading the concentrator land for five minutes, you can then go ahead to switch on and connect the oxygen analyzer to the outlet. For oxygen analyzers with the pressure sensing capability, as you can see in the graphics, uh, the picture in, uh, on the left uh, hand side, we have a, an oxygen analyzer with pressure sensing capability. So there is a main button there that is used to switch between concentration, flow, and pressure. And uh, in that uh, image, uh, the mode, uh, the analyzer mode is set to concentration and flow. So on the left, you can see the uh, concentration 92.5 and the flow 4.9. So using that main button, you can switch between concentration, flow, and pressure modes, depending on what you want to assess. If you're assessing the pressure, you need to uh, switch the inlet of that analyzer and put it to the pressure inlet. And on the right, you have an analyzer that was made by the GHI team. So that analyzer only has, uh, uh, only measures the flow and purity of oxygen from your concentrator. As I've already said, uh, the World Health Organization recommends oxygen purity of between 85% and 95.6%. So the observed purity on the oxygen analyzer should be within that range if the concentrator has no issues. If the purity is within the recommended range, it should be written on a sticker and then stick on the front of the concentrator so that other users may know uh, the purity that is coming from that concentrator. A note should also be taken that some concentrators take uh, some time before hitting 95.6%. So waiting and observing is encouraged. Now let's, uh, let's look at how we can assess outlet pressure of an oxygen concentrator. So there is also a need to assess the out of, uh, output pressure of your concentrator to make sure it is falling within the range that is stated in the service mag that comes with each and every concentrator. So the tool that you need to use in order to assess the pressure is the pressure gauge. Or if you have an oxygen analyzer that has pressure assessing capabilities, you can use that. But if your, uh, your analyzer only uh, measures the uh, period and the flow, then you need a pressure gauge to measure the outlet pressure. So different uh, models of concentrators have uh, different uh, outlet pressures. For example, the Devo, uh, Devo B5, 25 and 515 series of concentrators, that put pressure is 58 kPa or 8.4 psi. The SF Elite New Life 5 liters output pressure is 58 kPa, while its 10 liter counterpart is 138 kPa or 20 psi. So aside from protecting the patient from high pressures, we need to check the pressure in order to rectify some concentrator problems like fluctuating flow meter ball. So for this assessment, as I've already said, you need a pressure gauge. So since most pressure gauges, uh, the measure pressure in PSI and bars and not KPA, you need to convert the PSI value to KPA by multiplying it by 6.89 so that you can easily match that pressure with that uh, that is stated in the manual. Since the manuals uh, 
they usually state the outward pressure in KPA and not PSI. So after getting that PSI value from your pressure gauge, you can multiply it by 6.89 to get your KPA value. Now the steps that you need to follow in order to assess outward pressure of an oxy concentrate. Uh, regardless of the pressure measuring device that is in use, whether you're using a pressure gauge or an oxygen analyzer with pressure assessing capabilities, the steps to assess the pressure of an oxygen concentrate are the same. You first need to turn on the concentrator and let it run for five minutes for the same reason that have been explained on PUD day. Then connect the pressure gauge or your analyzer to the, uh, to the outlet and observe. Once the pressure gauge or analyzer is connected, the ball inside the flow meter will drop to the base. This is normal because during a pressure test, oxygen flow is blocked. If the ball doesn't drop to the base of your flow meter, it means there is a leak in the system. Then a comparison of the value and that that is stated in the manual is done. If there is a significant difference of more than plus or minus five, the necessary adjustment should be done on the pressure regulator inside the concentrator. Now we look at assessment of focusing concentrator runtime. So each and every concentrator comes with an hour meter. So an hour meter, which is also called a time counter, is a device that records elapsed time. They are used in oxygen concentrators to measure the runtime of the oxygen concentrator for maintenance purposes. So unlike continuous hour meters that measure total elapsed time from the point the meter was installed, oxygen concentrators use intermittent hour meters that measure and record total runtime only when the concentrator is running. In different concentrators, uh, the hour meter is located at different locations. In Tevo B525 series, the hour meter is located on top of the concentrator and is covered by the Helter filter cover. So to check the run hours, you have to remove the cover. In air safe concentrators, uh, the hour meter is located on the front cover just below the... So in air safe concentrators, the hour meter is located on the front cover just below the flow meter and above the reset switch. In J5, J10 and counter concentrators, the hour meter is embedded on the control board and the run hours are displayed on the LCD. So these uh, run hours, they tell a very good story about the state of the oxygen concentrator and to let you know if service is required. The World Health Organization commends service of one oxygen concentrator after every 5,000 hours. Though this may differ across manufacturers, but what the uh, WHO recommends is a service after every 5,000 run hours. So the major service that uh, is done after 5,000 run hours is usually servicing the compressor and refilling the beds. So reaching this far, uh, that was the three main types of assessment of oxy concentrators that can be done right in the world. If a concentrator is found to be performing below specifications or underperforming, or the concentrator has accumulated more than 5,000 hours from last service, it should be pulled out so that qualified technicians can work on it. Thank you for your attention. Let's continue saving lives by making oxygen readily available through timely assessment and maintenance of oxygen concentrators. Over to you now. Thank you very much, Patani, for that wonderful topic of interest and uh, a wonderful appeal at the end. I hope all of us on the call are ready and um, eager to save lives, to bring him back to life. Do we have any questions for Fatani pertaining to the topic of interest? Okay, we have a hand from Aubrey. Go on. Okay, so I just wanted to add from what Fatani has said about the assessment of the outlet, outlet pressure uh, on an oxygen concentrator using the oxygen analyzer. So the oxygen analyzers that measure pressure as well, they have an, a pressure sensor inside. So every pressure sensor has an operating range of pressures. So you always have to check uh, what pressure sensor is used in the analyzer. Usually they write at the back the operating range uh, of the pressures. So you have, if the analyzer that you're using uh, does not operate um, between those ranges, you will not get the right readings. So in that case, if let's say 
uh, your analyzer only measures up to 120 kPa. The 138 you might need to use the pressure gauge so you always have to check uh, the range or the operating range of pressures that the oxygen analyzer is recommended on uh thank you very much thank you very much Aubrey, for that comment it's, it's really important to assess considerators in the world because you might end up pulling out considerators that are performing well to the workshop or you might end up leaving considerators that are underperforming in the words, and uh, that can be very dangerous for the patients as well. So if we have no further questions, we still have time and we can move on to our next question. So we're continuing with our questions and this question reads, we have an ASAP 5 liter oxygen considerator that is giving low purity with a fluctuation between 60 and 50%. I serviced the compressor and changed the zeolite, but the purity only improved to 93% with a fluctuation between 93 and 85. So I know this is not okay. What can be the problem and how can I rectify this problem? So I'll ask one of our technicians to respond to that question. We have a hand from Masofa. So I'll leave the floor to Masofa. Thank you for the question. The problem of this concentrator are assumed to be many. What is required is to do a proper troubleshooting and solve the problem if found. And then one of the root causes of fluctuate, fluctuation is the faulty four-way vel uh, solenoid valve. If either of the valves is not working effectively, that might result in fluctuation. If one side is failing to switch on, on or open, this lessens the ability to maintain the maximum pressure in the product tank, thereby resulting in, fluctu in fluctuation. It is advisable to replace the defective one with a good one to maintain the required. And uh, leakages bring fluctuation as well. Check around the connections and make sure that the connections are airtight and are not letting any air escape. Broken flow meter gives room to fluctuation. The broken flow meter allows air to escape and this results in fluctuation. Blockage or ob obstruction in the intake pathway causes fluctuation. Make sure any Make sure if any blockage is found, clear it for best functional of the machine. Thank you. Thank you very much, Masofa, for that response. Uh, indeed, further troubleshooting and thorough troubleshooting is needed for that opt-in considerator. We'll move on to our next question and probably our final question for the call. Hello, I'm a clinical technician working with a certain clinic we had a training on how we can take care of our oxygen considerators. So they taught us on how we can clean the humidifier bottle. So like a good trainee, I decided to clean out our humidifier bottles with soap and refill them with distilled water. To my surprise, most of them are giving a popping sound and others keep whistling. What can be the cause of this and how can I fix them? So I'll ask one of our technicians to tackle this question. We have a hand from Aubrey. So the floor is yours, Aubrey. Oh, thank you very much for the question. <clears throat> so oxygen produced uh, by the concentrator is a dry gas and can at times, especially if the flow is above five liters per minute and with constant use, cause dryness of the throat, mouth and nasal passage of the patient. To avoid dryness, a humidifier bottle is used to hydrate the airflow and make the oxygen therapy more comfortable for the recipient. Oxygen concentrators can however be used without a humidifier bottle in some cases. The humidifier portal has various parts that need to be taken note of when being used. The first thing to the first thing to note is the bottle has a minimum and maximum marking that shows the minimum amount of water needed for it to work and the maximum point to which water should be filled. 
If the water is filled above the maximum marking, you stand a chance of damaging the unit. Since water can flow back into the unit and hence damage some of the components inside it. And if also filled to the minimum marking, below the minimum marking, the diffuser will not reach the water and air will simply circulate in the open space of the bottle, hence defying the whole purpose of hydrating the air. The second part is called the diffuser, and this is a tube that brings air, that brings in air. It has holes at its tip that are arranged in a 360 degrees orientation to avoid or reduce noise during operation and helps in reducing mineral buildup. Another important part of the humidifier bottle is a safety valve. This valve controls the pressure in the humidifier bottle and works just like the compressor relief valve where it opens, causes a whistling or popping sound to allow some of the air build up in the bottle to escape. The bottle has also an oxygen outlet port where the nasal cannula is connected and it's, it's directed to the patient. We also have an inlet nut that helps us to connect the bottle to the concentrator unit. There are a number of steps that need to be followed when setting up or mounting the humidifier bottle to the unit. So I'll ask uh, my colleague Paulina to take you through the proper mounting of the humidifier bottle. Thank you. Um, thank you, Obi. So the steps to take when mounting your humidifier bottle are as follows. First of all, you need to thoroughly clean out your bottle and fill it with distilled water to the maximum marking. Then you attach the cup of the cup to the bottle. Make sure you tighten carefully that there should be no crisscrossing of the threads. This prevents leakages in the, of the air. Screw the bottle onto the unit at the inlet nut. This will depend on the type of concentrator that you have. Some screw directly to the unit, while others um, a humidifier adapter. When the unit is turned on, there should be bubbles being produced from the tip of the diffuser. Once this is done, proceed to test for leakages. This can be done by turning the unit on and blocking the outlet. If you get the safety valve to open, um, meaning um, they are producing a whistling or a popping sound, then you are sure there are no leaks. If not, that means your cap and the bottle have not been tightly fitted. You therefore have to unscrew the bottle and tighten the cap. This is how you can mount up your bottle and test for leakages. Thank you and back to you, Aubrey. Thank you very much, Paulina, for that explanation. Now to get back to your question, you will notice that the test for leakages involves blocking the outlet port. So if you have a safety valve opening continuously, it means that there's a blockage in your pipe that takes air to the patient. This also means that the patient is not receiving air due to the blockage. So you therefore need to check uh, and see where the tube might be twisted and untangle it to allow the air to reach the patient. Thank you very much. Back to you, Naomi. Okay, thank you very much, Aubrey and Paulina for that wonderful explanation. Do we have any questions or comments to what has been explained? Okay, seems we have none. So this marks the end of our call today. And uh, we would like to encourage those that have just joined us to send their contact details in the chat so that we can add them to the emailing list that they get updates of new materials whenever we add anything. But also, uh, you remember that the call is hosted every Thursday from 2 to 3 p.m. So be sure to join us again next week. If you have any questions regarding uh, your oxygen concentrators, maintenance, use, and assessment, you can send your, e your questions through our email, info at oxygenalliance.org, and we'll do our very best to give you solutions that are required. You can also visit our website, www.oxygenalliance.org, and learn more about the Oxygen Alliance and all the work that we do. We also have a YouTube channel where 
all of the videos of the course and also videos of Oxygen Assessment are posted. So be sure to visit our channel, subscribe and hit the notifications bell while you're there so that you can get notifications whenever new material has been posted. See you next week and I wish you a lovely week.